Hi everybody, Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors. And today's contract tip, we are continuing on with the uh, uh, talking about the changes that the Georgia Association of Realtors, or GAR, has made to the 2021 contract package. So please check out the other videos in this series and uh, as well as I will link below a calendar to online uh, virtual CE classes on changes to the 2021 GAR contract forms packages. But today I want to introduce you to another new form. So let's get into it. So today's new form. <laughs> Hello. Seema wants to learn about the new form too. So today's new form is called, drum roll please, it is the F289 Request for Confirmation of Presentation of Offer or Counter Offer. So really curious, uh, you guys comment below what you think of this form. So again, it is F289, request for the confirmation of the presentation of an offer or counter offer. Hmm, so uh, basically you fill in the date, the request is given on and you fill in the state. Then there's a name to fill in the broker who is requesting the confirmation that the offer was presented uh, and the offer, you reference the offer with the date, the offer between, and you fill in uh, the name of the buyer and the name of the seller for the purchase and sale of, and you fill in the property address. So in other words, you are identifying what offer, what buyer, what seller, and the date that that offer was made. And then it, re, uh, it, it gets into some license law and the code of ethics, which I'll get into in a second. And then it has a place for the signature of the requesting broker, the broker or the agent that's asking for proof that the other agent presented the offer to the uh, buyer or seller or counter offer. And then it has a place to fill in uh, the time that the broker says it was uh, says it was presented. Responding broker does hereby affirm that the above referenced offer or counter offer was presented to their client on uh, or customer on, and then it has a date and a time, and then it is signed by the respond dated by the responding broker. So. You identify the offer or the counter offer by the buyer and the seller, property address and the date. You do the date because it, we're talking about counter offers as well. It is signed by the broker slash agent requesting proof that the offer was presented. Then it is affirmed by the agent that received it and presented it to their customer client, what date and time it was actually presented and signed by the broker slash agent who presented the offer. So first of all, whose signatures are not anywhere on this form? Think about that for a second. Whose signatures are not on this form? Yep. No place does the buyer or the seller sign this form. This is just a form between agents and brokers uh, proving that you did in fact present the offer or counter offer. And we know from license law, as well as from the articles of the code of ethics, if you are a realtor, that you must present all offers. And just in case you forgot, the GAR Forms Committee has referenced the license law as well as the uh, article two of the, I'm sorry, article one of the code of ethics on this form. So let me read that to you in case you actually have forgotten. And like I said, just in case it is a reference on the form. So the license law to which all real estate agents in the state of Georgia, if you have a real estate license issued to you by the state of Georgia, you must adhere to license laws, period. Those are laws 
through the Georgia uh, uh, Real Estate Commission, the rules through the Georgia Real Estate Commission, as well as through the official code Georgia annotated laws on our books governing our profession. So on this form, it specifically states rule 520-1-10-1 of the Georgia Real Estate Commission states, quote, a licensee shall promptly tender to any customer or client any signed offer to purchase, sell, lease, or exchange property made to such client or customer. In a transaction in which the offerer is not a client or customer of the licensee, the licensee receiving an offer must provide a copy of the offer to the licensee working with or representing the offeree. In other words, uh, let's just say you had a listing, the listing expired, the seller listed with another broker. You then receive an offer, but it is no longer your listing. License law states, rule, correct rule 520-1.10-1 uh, states, you still must present that offer, but now you have to present it to the agent or the broker that is now representing the seller from the expired listing. That's what that last part means. And then if you are a realtor, and we've had this discussion before, if you're a realtor, meaning you belong to a local board of realtors, and therefore your dues money also goes to the national level, you are a member of NAR, the National Association of Realtors, and that makes you a realtor. So if you are a realtor, you must also adhere to the Realtor Code of Ethics. And the National Association of Realtors Code of Ethics states in Article 1, Standard of Practice 1-7, Sweet man, or your phone, that's your amazing husband. Call. Upon the written request of a cooperating broker who submits an offer to the listing broker, the listing broker shall provide as soon as practical a written affirmation to the cooperating broker stating that the offer has been submitted to the seller slash landlord or a written notification that the seller slash landlord has waived the obligation to have the offer presented. So again, this form uh, is a new form this year, 2020 by uh, GAR, F289, Request for Confirmation of Presentation of Offer or Counter Offer. And once again, this is only signed by agents slash brokers. And uh, just as a reminder, you are uh, you must adhere to license law and the article of the code of uh, articles of the code of ethics regarding the presentation of offers. So now you're sitting back, scratching your head, saying, "But what if dot dot dot?" And I am not going to fill in the dot dot dots about professionalism or uh, potential lack of professionalism uh, or courtesy among your colleagues. But you still might be wondering, well, you know. What about the client, him or herself? Well, I, I, there's no place on this form for their signatures. Well, the client, so you agents, uh, if you get presented with this, I absolutely suggest you sign it to prove that you presented the offer. But I suggest you go one step further. And this form has been in existence. And this is another GAR form. And this is the form where your public people actually sign. Again, no changes to this form this year, and this form has been in existence for a while. It is GAR F-288, Notice to Reject Offer or Counter Offer. And I have mentioned this in numerous videos that I have done uh, over the years. But basically, this, again, you fill in the date, and you fill in the name of the buyer, the name of the seller. You reference the offer or the counter offer by date, uh, property address. And what this states is buyer or seller, there's little check boxes. So depending on if it's an offer or counter offer, which party uh, is, the, is the, the one making the offer and which party is the one receiving the offer, buyer or seller, hereby give notice to all parties in the above reference offer or counter offer to reject the last offer or counter offer received by the signers below. Further, it is the intent of the signers below that upon delivery of this notice to the other parties, no offers or counter offers shall remain open for acceptance. The use of the terms buyers, 
or sellers herein are for descriptive purposes only and shall not be constituted as evidence of any present agreement between the parties. And then it is signed by the signature of the party giving notice and date and signed by, uh, I'm sorry, just the party giving notice. That would be the person that received the offer or counter offer. So a couple of things that are important in here. Number one, it is clear proof that it is the public person that is rejecting the offer. Not that the agent never presented it and they never saw it, but proof that the public person saw it, reviewed it, and is saying, no, I am not accepting your offer. The other thing that's really key in this is that last sentence that says, not only that, that once the, uh, uh, the party delivers notice, this notice, this signed notice to reject offer counterparty to the other party, no offers or counter offers are remain, remain open for acceptance. In other words, you can't go back, the parties cannot go back and sign an unexpired offer or counter offer. So we talked about that in uh, the, last, the last video or one of the videos linked below on the changes that the uh, GAR Forms Committee made on the counter offer form, which was 249. We discussed how important that is. I went to a little bit more discussion on that. So what do you think? Um, I think as a broker uh, that agents should use both of these forms in conjunction. That um, anytime, especially if there is a multiple offer situation, but or anytime there is an offer that you receive to present to your client or 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 customer, or past client or customer, and uh, your public person rejects it. I believe you should get in the practice of sending both of these forms. Number one, the form that proves that you did present it, the time and date that you presented it, and the other one would be your public person, that it is their uh, affirmation or assertion that they did see it, and it is the public person rejecting it rather than the fact that they never even saw it at all. So what do you think? Comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you watching this whole series on uh, the changes to the 2021 GAR contract forms. Stay tuned for more. Thank you so much for watching. Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors, satisfying your needs with service, innovation, and education. Ha, ha, ha.